Okay, so in this problem we have a force which is acting at point C and its magnitude is 60 pound. Then there is a moment which is acting around here and that has a magnitude of 100 pounds. So the question here is to determine the resultant moment of the force and the moment MC about the axis AF. Right, so <coughs> I said that you have this force and we need the moment of this force about this direction. So that would be one part. Then you also have this moment and this moment will be resolved into two components, one along this and one could be perpendicular to this. <coughs> so your actual resultant moment will be the component of this moment about this, that's one, then the moment of this about this. You add those two and that will give you the resultant moment. So, <coughs> I mean, this problem is going to be in two parts. So first we look at the force and we look at the actual moment which the force is going to produce about this axis. So to do this, we need the force vector by itself. Then we will need a unit vector going from A to A. And for the, this problem here, I'm going to choose the direction like this. So that's what I'm going to choose the direction for the unit vector. Now, we need to <coughs> define some points. So this point here is going to be the origin. And I could choose this point here, we call this as A. We choose this point, we call this as B. Then the point here, we call this as E. So if you, if you need the force vector, then you have its magnitude and we can create a unit vector going from C to D. So that's going to be the force magnitude divided by a vector going from point C to D divided by its length. So we look for the coordinates, we look at the coordinate of point C, it's on the z-axis, so you get 0, 0 and 4, that's what you get for C. Then we look for the coordinates on D, it's in the x or y plane, so z goes to 0 and then you have 2 going in that direction, so you have a negative 2 and you got 4 on this direction, so you have for the y. So this here will be, we need the d first, so you get negative 2, 4, and 0. So those are the coordinates of the tip of the vector running from c to d. Then you subtract the tail, which happened to be c, so you go negative 0, negative 0, and negative 4. You take this times i, you take this times j, and you take this times as k. 
So this component is going to be negative 2. This component is going to be positive 4. And this component is going to be negative 4. So the next thing you can do is find the length. So that's going to be negative 2 square, 4 square, and negative 4 square. And the bottom part of the equation here will change to 16 plus 16 is 32 plus 4 is 36. So that's going to be 6. So your force will be, let's say this time this over 6, this minus 20 i plus 40 j negative 40 k. So that's just the force vector. Then we need, uh, so we need the unit vector and I defined that going in that direction. So this by itself is going to be it's a vector going from A to B and you divide that by its length. Because <coughs> I mean anytime you want you know, to find a unit vector, you take a position vector and then you divide it by its length. So now 